In this video, we will derive the expression for the length of a vector with respect to a basis that is not Cartesian. Our new basis B consists of vectors B1 and B2, which are still orthogonal to each other. And that's good because that will allow us to use the Pythagorean theorem like we did before, but they're no longer each unit length. Well, one of them is still unit length, but the other one is length three, which is what makes this basis not Cartesian. And we'll discover that as a result of that, the expression that captures the length of the vector v in terms of its components, and because the basis has changed, the values of the components have changed. Nevertheless, I gave them the same names as we did before, alpha 1 and alpha 2. And I'm still combining them into an element of R2, which I'm still calling alpha. But the expression in terms of alpha, or its entries alpha 1 and alpha 2, will be different from what we had before when we were using a Cartesian basis. And that's why this is an important discussion to have at this point. Because all of the action in this chapter, outside of this video and maybe one or two more videos like this, takes place with respect to a Cartesian basis. So it's important to keep in mind all along that all of the answers that we're obtaining would look very different had our choice of basis been different. And this video will provide one good example of that. Also, we're paving the way for the next big discussion in this course, which is inner products. And when we talk about inner products, which generalizes the concepts of length and angles to arbitrary vector spaces, the definition of length will change. It will be approached from a completely different direction. And also the arbitrariness in the choice of basis will be one of the governing principles. So this video is meant to prepare us for that brave new world. All right, so now let's get to the task at hand and determine the expression for the length of the vector v with respect in terms of its components, alpha 1 and alpha 2. So let's attempt the same construction as we did before, which is to drop this line right here at the right angle and determine the length of this segment and of course of this segment as we did before, so we can then use the Pythagorean theorem. And just to assist us in this simple yet subtle task, let's come up with a couple of realistic numbers. I think it's fair to say that this vector is roughly two. Its length is roughly two. And so this segment right here, I would say is maybe just under one, but let's just say it's approximately one. So before, the length of this segment was actually alpha 1, but that hinged on the fact that the basis element that we were using was length 1. But now the length of this vector is 3. So it's important to realize that this segment right here is no longer alpha 1, because if alpha 1 were approximately 1, right, then we would multiply alpha 1 by b1 and get a Again, get a segment that's three units long or approximately three units long. So alpha one, we're now decomposing this vector v with respect to this basis. So alpha one is not one. It's much smaller than one because we don't have to take an entire vector b1 to get this. We have to take about a third. Looks like a little bit under one third. So alpha one is now a smaller number than it was before. Before it would have been close to one, just under one but now it's just under one-third, so it scales in that way. So if we want to obtain the length of this segment in terms of alpha one, so that we can use the Pythagorean theorem next, we have to realize that it equals three times alpha one. That's what the length of this segment is. It used to be alpha one. Now the length of this segment hasn't changed, because the vector v hasn't changed and these directions haven't changed. But what the length of that segment is in terms of alpha 1 has changed. And it's now 3 alpha 1. So because alpha 1 has shrunk by a factor of 3 to get back to the length of this segment so that in a moment we can get back to the length of this vector, we have to multiply it back by 3. So the length of this segment is no longer alpha 1 like it was before. It is now 3 times alpha 1, or more generally, the length of the vector b1 times alpha 1. And of course, it still hinges on the fact that this is the right angle. Things would become much more complicated 
if we gave that up, but we haven't given that up. Ultimately, of course we will, but not right now. And just as before, the length of this segment right here is alpha 2. Well, that's because the length of B2 is still 1. So that hasn't changed, so this component hasn't changed, and what the length of this segment is in terms of the component hasn't changed either. Here is where all the change is, because that was the only change compared to the basis we had before. And so, the length of the vector v, we're going to go for the length squared, so we don't have to deal with square roots, is now this squared plus this squared. So it's 9 alpha 1 squared plus alpha 2 squared. And there you go. It is a different expression. Our basis is no longer Cartesian, so the length of the vector is no longer captured by the same expression. So that's the main takeaway from this, from this video. So we have succeeded in demonstrating that the choice of basis has a direct effect on the form of the expression that captures the length and later, of course, angles and all of the other geometric aspects of the problem. And now that we've succeeded uh, at the task at hand, I will leave you with one very intriguing question. How would you capture this expression in the language of matrix products, which only uses alpha, doesn't make any explicit reference to alpha 1 and alpha 2? So I'll give you a little bit of a hint. You can still throw in some numbers, but you have to do it in such a way that you don't have to refer to alpha 1 and alpha 2. So it is no longer alpha transpose alpha. Another important thing to realize that when you see this as a representation of the length of a vector, that immediately implies Cartesian basis. And if the basis is no longer Cartesian, this expression is no longer valid because this expression is of course alpha 1 squared plus alpha 2 squared. And we need 9 alpha 1 squared. But it turns out that there is a way to rescue this expression. There is a way to add something to it. I'll give you a little bit of a hint. There's a matrix that goes right in the middle of that. That saves the whole situation and is actually the answer to a lot of the questions I'm posing in these videos. And that is a very important matrix. It has many important, very many names that it is referred to by. So I, we won't talk about it now, but it's just a nice question to leave you with, which is to figure out what matrix, what are the entries of the matrix that you need to stick in here so that this nice matrix expression, which refers to alpha as a whole object, doesn't break it up into its entries like this expression does, that will actually evaluate to this expression. So I'll wrap up this video by leaving you with this very nice question.